podcast party. Descent into a verse. My name is Hylan. My friends and I finally found Duke Alder Ravengard in the catacombs beneath Elturel's Grand Cemetery. He's wearing the Helm of Torm's sight, but there's something wrong. The Duke is babbling in celestial and infernal, as if divine and hellish forces are battling for control of his mind. Renaissance is trying to help him with a spell of his own. You place your fingers on his forehead under the helm. And at first, you see his eyes sort of move back and forth under his eyelids like he's in REM sleep. But they move so swiftly that it's almost obvious to you that unfortunately the spell did not function as intended. You know just from the fact that this helm is of extreme magical power that no simple spell will break the hold that these entities have on him. A more involved, perhaps, ritual might free Ravengard and break their hold. Can we get him back to, um, the priestess? Aria, I think we're gonna have to. Go as quickly as we can. Okay. Sounds like a good plan. Does Corbin have any spells he might think could break this? Uh, it depends what Renaissance relates to you all. Yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much tell Corbin what you just told me, which is that I don't think that any spell is yeah. going to do it. It's not a curse, right? You don't believe it's a curse, per se. Um, do you all want to stay here for now and heal up? Try to do a short rest here? No, I mean for like eight hours or longer. With that oh, no, portal? With that portal back. over there? I don't think so. No. We could do it in the sanctuary, maybe, once we get yes, back I, there. I can heal anyone who needs... I'm for heading up back to uh, Gideon Lightward, maybe trying a short yes. rest at his place, yes, and then I, heading I, back I, to... Your motto will protect us for eight hours. I could pray, and he'll put a shield around us and protect us, and we'll be safe and warm. I'm just worried about this fight he's having. Yes, I think, I think we do should... Do we want to bring him back when he's like this? Yes. I think yes. that's the only way he's getting fixed, is if we take him to Faria. He's going to be exhausted Does anyone eventually. need healing now before we start to move? Uh, yeah, definitely. How hurt are you? Like I have nine hit points left. Ooh. Plus the temps I gave you right, at the end right, of right. that fight. I'm going to actually, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Oh, okay. But I could use another one if you've got like a level one. Okay, so I cast Cure Wounds on myself for nine. Okay. Okay, I, I've cast Cure Wounds for 10 hit points. For 10, okay, I, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm about at half, so as long as we don't get into another fight, I'm fine. I still fine. have healing spells as well. Okay, cool, let's start heading back. Yeah, all right. So we're we're not trying to see any new rooms on the way back, Matt. Um, <laughs> Cor Corbin's gonna take um, older shield also. Take a shield and his sword. Yeah. So and don't you sword. already have a shield? I do, but I'll just strap his to my back. I just don't want him to have it in case he goes ballistic. And okay. yeah. So I'm just carrying it. Sure. You got like two swords, two shields. I have a dagger. Oh, I have my sister's morning star. Scimitar, whip. That's it. <laughs> okay, so we return to the chapel. Yes, indeed. I mean, I think we need to go back to High Hall, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's not safe. Didn't we do them a favor just now? Well, that's just Gideon. Like, we have to sneak through the city again to get back to High Hall. Like, Gideon is just in control of the graveyard, I think. Oh, right. Right. I'm for trying for a short rest here. Okay. Fine. So you're gonna just rest in the room Well, I, I think, I actually think yeah. we should head back to where Gideon is. Yes, and try the short rest there. Do you think he's gonna have something to say about this helm? He may know something about it. I don't know that we want to show it to him, to be honest. Yeah, oh, That's what I, I mean, see. but it's on his head and we can't take it off. Um, no, let's so not, let's not maybe go we see Gideon. Just stay here. Guys, I can cast the little dome yeah, I think that Ilmata can protect Yeah, us. that's a great idea. That would be great, thank you. All right, so Corbin's gonna cast Liamon's tiny hut on us. Very cool. And we'll hang out yep. in there for a short We're trying for a short rest sure. here. I'm gonna just say encouraging 
peaceful things to Elder Ravengard and Celestial while I sit there. Within this dome, as you all sit and tend to your wounds, physical and psychological, I guess, Alder continues to just jibber-jabber on between Abyssal and Celestial. While we are resting, Ophelia will play a little tune. She's starting to try to compose a song about the Trumpet of Sparkles, and uh, Swag has Song of Rest. Great. You're all healed up, or close to it anyway. Mm-hmm. Yep. Over top with attempts. The hour passes and the dome disappears. I think we're going to try to make our way stealthily towards the cemetery gates. Mm-hmm. Celia rolled a 21. Guidance for Rhea. I'll give guidance to myself. Corbin got a 15. Kylan got a 16. Renaissance got a 9. Rhea, with disadvantage, got a 5. Plus one for guidance. Six. And Lulu, our flappy, flappy friend, got a 15. So I'm looking at, well, Alder doesn't need to make a stealth check. He's just basically a body. So I think at this point in time, I'm seeing more successes than failures. So you're pretty quiet on your way out of the temple. Great. As you turn, you do see that there are two skeletal minotaurs directly south of you. Yeah, we're going to go around them like we did last time. Yep. Right? Didn't we do that? We went around them? That's correct, yeah. Right. Now, it's worthwhile mentioning stealth works well unless people have a clear line of sight on you. Right. I think I'm misunderstanding. Didn't So what was the thing he said where he, like, communicated with his things to, like, let us pass, yeah, That's right? correct. He said the word stay, and the skeletal minotaurs did nothing to impede your progress. Do they seem hostile? They do not move at you, so no. All right, let's just make our way past them. Okay. Smile and try to look friendly. As you clear the south part of the entrance, you do see that there are more minotaur skeletons. There are perhaps two or three more, and directly behind them, about 10 feet, is Gideon Lightward. And he turns as you advance past the chapel. So, like, can he see Elder Ravengard? Based on where he's standing, he cannot yet see Elder Ravengard, but he can see Corbin and he can see Renaissance. Okay. Uh, So I'm going to start walking towards Gideon. Yeah, yeah. He sees you coming. I'm hoping to sort of cut him off in the middle distance between... Yeah, he doesn't approach um, you. He just has his hands behind his back and he sort of watches you with these red-rimmed eyes. Like the room where we found Elder Ravengard, do I know what the religious purpose of that room would have been? Was like a font? Make a religion check, post X Facto. 16. You could call it the vault, maybe? Or the ascendance chamber? How about that? The ascendance chamber. I say, Gideon, there's a portal to the abyss in your ascendance chamber. That's where the demons are coming from. We killed a bunch and sent one back through the portal, but it's still there. We don't know how to close it. Neither do I, he says. Right. Well, our business here is concluded. If you've no objection, we'll be on our way. What do you mean your business is concluded? Did you find the person you were searching for? We did, but unfortunately, he's uh, in very bad shape. We're hoping to find a way to restore him. We don't have the means to do it here. And he sort of moves towards you, right past the skeletal minotaurs. He says, when you say in bad shape. Would you please elaborate? His experience here seems to have broken his mind. I'm sure it's not uncommon in Avernus. He says, the mind is such a tenuous thing, but creatures under the sway of madness are often mistaken for those under the influence of demonic power. I was able to investigate that. I show him my dreidel that I use for divine sense. I'm a paladin, so you know I can sense such things. And I detected no such influence. It's just a human reaction to his circumstance. We hope he may recover, given the opportunity to rest. He almost sort of doesn't even pay attention to that statement. He's not looking at your dreidel. He's not looking at your eyes. He's looking past you. Am I boring you? 
He says, May I see him? Is that necessary? He steps forwards slowly, and he says, Yes. He's he's in a delicate condition, Gideon. Delicacy is of no relevance to me. I am here to stem the tide of demonic influence. Well, as I told you, not the case. Make a persuasion check. (laughs) Matt, I was trying to break in. Yes. I was go- I'm right next to Ren and I was just going to put my hand on his shoulder uh-huh. and put my head down and say, I'm to guide him as quietly as I can and give him guidance on this bullshit. Okay, before you do so, make a stealth check, please, Corbin, to see if he hears you say that. A nine? Fuck. God damn it. Oh, is it? it? I'm hearing lots of people. It... I'm hearing lots of people. <laughs> I want to know if it's possible to knock Alder Ravenguard out. Like, just a non-lethal... He seems unconscious already as it is. Oh, that's true. But he's still talking. He is. When, when Andy is, is muttering his thing, I want to just also um, hum under my breath quietly a little tune and give Renaissance Bardic inspiration. So, the following happens. Gideon says to you, his eyes snap over to you, Corbin, and says, I'm sorry, what was that? And then he waves his hand in the air. Corbin, make a wisdom saving throw, please. Really? He's bringing it? 14? You are paralyzed. Uh... And he says, now where was I? Before your hand can touch Renaissance's shoulder, as a reaction, he casts whatever he cast on you. So you're frozen in place. He takes another step towards you, Renaissance, and says, please produce the one who you have sought. I point to Corbin and I say, just broke our oath and I attack him. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> Hi, everybody. The show will be back shortly for the second half. Right now, it's time to give you a live event update and news about how you can play Dungeons & Dragons with us. Hey, have you ever wanted to offend the undead priest of an infertile goddess, just like our heroes did in this episode? Well, our professional dungeon masters are available to hire for online games. Check us out at cast-party.com and follow us on Facebook at CastPartyDnd, on Twitter at CastParty2, or on Instagram at Cast underscore Party. We have games for kids as well as adults. If you enjoy Podcast Party, please follow the show, rate us, and leave a review. Thanks very much for listening, and now back to our adventure in Avernus. <laughs> All hell is about to break loose. Let's roll initiative. Oh no, I am scared. Crit fail on initiative. Oh, what happens? (laughs) Ophelia rolled a 17. Even with advantage, Renaissance got a nine. All right. Highland, what did you get? I got a 22. Corbin rolled a one, but he's plus two, so he got a three. Aww. Well, you're paralyzed. So. You're paralyzed, so. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Gideon also got a three on initiative. What's your dex modifier there, Corbin? Wow, he sucks. Mine is plus two. <laughs> <laughs> I hate him, so. Judgy, uh, his is a plus one, so you go before he does. All right. I mean, I feel like we've learned enough about him that I feel comfortable judging him a little bit. Yeah. Lulu rolled a natural 20. Give her a break. All right, Highland, you're up first. Great. I saw Corbin stiffen up. I immediately take a few steps forward. A total of 10 feet for the people who are interested in that. I'm going to throw two of my psychic blades at Gideon. I'm scared of him. Very scared. That's a 14 to hit. That will hit. Oh, great. That's nine psychic. And he fails with his concentration. Uh, Excellent. Because he rolled... A natural one on his concentration save. You didn't see me coming. Yes, and in fact, because of that, the spell on Corbin falters. He is no longer paralyzed. Yes! And I immediately throw my second blade 
And that is a nat one. That was exciting. I'm going to stay where I am. Well done, Highland. Thank you. It is now Lulu's turn. Lulu uh, freaks out a bit, but uh, recomposes herself. And let's see, what can she, what kind of trouble can she get into? Definitely does not want to get in melee range yeah, at this point no. in time. Yeah, no. Okay. Lulu will cast her last spell of the day, which is Bless. Aw. And she'll nice. she'll cast it on Ophelia, Hylan, and Rhea, because everyone else is outside of her range. And that is her turn. Hashtag Blessed. Hashtag, Hashtag blessed. blessed. I was going to make that joke, and then I was like, is that too stupid? <laughs> but then you made it, so. So it's, it's my turn Great now. Spell. It's Ophelia's turn. Yep. Yes, it is. Okay, Ophelia will run around, charge forward so that she is on the far side of Highland, offering some protection to uh, the others, to, to Lulu and, and Rhea, and she will cast Dissonant Whispers on the Minotaur closest to Highland. Right. That's right. going to be a DC 15 wisdom save. That is a 13 on that wisdom saving throw. Woohoo! So it's going to fail. That'll be 14 psychic damage to the Minotaur, and it has to, um, it needs to run as far away from me as its speed will allow. So the creature runs, just turns tail, and wordlessly or soundlessly, it's very creepy, runs just past Renaissance. I will op attack it as it passes me. Absolutely. Go ahead and do so. Yes. It's actually only a 12. A 12 will hit. Oh, okay. yes. Um, so Love in that. that case, it will take 10 bludgeoning. I'm hoping that like my bony friends in the sewer, it might be vulnerable to that since it's also bones, but I don't know. These creatures are indeed vulnerable to bludgeoning, so it'll take twice as much damage. Whoa. Okay, so, it, so it takes 20 bludgeoning damage and two radiant. Amazing. Oh my God. Wow. Corbin has big, long arms, and he'd also like to take a swipe at it. Unfortunately, Corbin, you have a reach of 10 feet, am I correct? Yes. So it doesn't go out of your opportunity attack range. Oh, that's right. Oh, he's still in there. with you. Yeah. Uh, damn it. Stupid long arms. <laughs> 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 wow. I hate you, arms. Yeah. Thank you, Ophelia and uh, Renaissance, for that amazing combo. C -c -c combo. That was yeah. All right. Woo! Uh, it is now Rhea's turn. Rhea feels pretty confident after seeing that combo. She charges into the fray, right into this Minotaur, so she will make two attacks with her sword. The first is a non-natural 20, which will All hit. All right. And the second one is an 11, which will miss, unfortunately. It just clacks Did off Did she roll the... her extra... She is blessed. Her extra D4 because she's blessed. That is true. Thank you for reminding me. And because the AC of this creature is, in fact, 12, it doesn't matter what she rolls. She will hit. That is a total of 17 slashing damage against this creature. Yay! Love it. And that is Rhea's turn. Renaissance, you're up. I close my left-hand gauntlet over the top of Heaven's Fall, and I say, Avernus. And Heaven's Fall bursts into flame as I cast Searing Smite, and that's my bonus action. I step towards Gideon Lightward. Yeah. And I say, the fact that you think you've got to kill the man to fight the demon is why the blood war will never end. And I take a swing at him with Heaven's Fall. Yeah. That is a 25. Yeah. That'll hit. So he, Sweet. he's going to take five bludgeoning and four radiant from the mace, but he's also... A smited. Going to take 11 fire damage from the smite, and he is on fire. Uh, All right. He's even scarier now. So that's, <laughs> that's 20 damage total, and then I'm going to take a second swing at him. Go for it. 13. A 13 will hit. Awesome. That is going to be eight bludgeoning and four radiant for a total of 12 damage. Damn. Excellent. Okay, yeah, he did not like those two hits at all. He just gets battered about by your mace attacks, and uh, this would uh, absolutely crush any mortal who would have taken these kind of hits. And he is, in fact, bleeding from these strikes, but he is also on fire. He doesn't seem to be a f really that concerned with being on fire. Mm -hmm. He sort of looks down at the fact that he's on fire, and he sort of, like, does the whole dust off shoulder kind of thing. Mm. And and he sort of like, he just cr sort of cracks his neck back in place and looks at you with gleaming red eyes. Mm 
Mm. Okay, that is my turn. It is now the skeleton's turn. Uh Uh-oh. There are a total of five Minotaur skeletons. Oh, boy. Okay. And they hit hard. One is actually sort of engaged with Rhea. They charge in, all converging upon Corbin and Renaissance, and they are fast. You guys have seen large creatures move, and they're usually pretty slow. But these things, they kick up their hooves in a way that belies their undead nature. They move extremely fast. They can move. Oh my God. Right? <laughs> it's utterly amazing. Get out. <laughs> Get out. I thought we were done. I thought we were done. Nope. Uh, Are we not done? I thought we were done with that bullshit. <laughs> There we go. Oh, oh my God, bullshit. Tall. Oh, I'm has... just gonna keep going. Uh, yes, just ignore them, Matt. And the four Minotaur skeletons have placed themselves and are just surrounding almost completely both Renaissance and Corbin. These creatures will make a single great axe attack a piece. So, oh boy, two on. Renaissance and two on Corbin, and because they have flanking, they will all be with advantage. Corbin and I kind of put our backs against each other. Oh, yeah. Based on your armor classes, all four of them will hit. Renaissance, you have an armor class of 21, am I correct? Correct. And Corbin, you have an armor class of 18, am I correct? Correct. Okay, so yes, the first attack on Corbin was an 18 on the dot. Second attack on Corbin was a 21 with advantage. The first attack on Renaissance was a 22, and the second attack on Renaissance was a 24. Mm. Oh, that's bullshit. Uh, it worked well the first time, Sorry. not so much the second. Here we go. Um, <laughs> damn it. I was milking it. <laughs> damage to you, Corbin, is 38 yep. slashing damage Whoa. total. Whoa. Uh, Damage to you, Renaissance, is also, surprisingly, 38 slashing damage. Oh, that is... Uh, uh, you had some temps, right? Yeah, they're all gone now. I am yeah, scared. Yeah, mine too. Okay, so that, that does knock out all my temps, and it also hurts. Yeah, absolutely. The hurt. Minotaur will then attack Rhea, and that misses with a 12. Rhea deftly dodges out of the way and places her sword in the parrying position. That is the Minotaur's turn. And now, Corbin's turn. Corbin just took two big hits. He staggers, almost drops to his knee, but he keeps strong, and he shows his shield to them, and he goes, Ilmota, send these foul creatures away. And I'm going to use my channel divinity to turn undead. Yes. Yes. Every every undead creature within 30 feet of me needs to make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or get the fuck out. (laughs) Cool. Gideon first, because Gideon is definitely undead. And he rolled a 15 on the dot. Oh, damn it. Let's do it for the skeletons now. There are five of them within the range of your channel divinity, so I'll do five wisdom saving throws. Here we go. So three out of the four fail. Awesome. The fifth saves. The three of the ones closest to us. So that's correct. Three out of the ones closest to you will run in terror. And they are turned. Two, they are indeed turned. They're turned, T-U-R-N-T. <laughs> turned undead. And two out of the five will remain where they are. When it's their turn, they need to move as far away from me as they can. Anything else, Corbin? Bonus action. I would like to cast a spell. Cool. Yes, please. A thin sliver of light appears behind my friend Gideon, and out comes a big fluffy pillow with flowers Yay. and all kinds of wonderful stuff on it. It's big and soft, and I womp him as hard as I can with it, and I cast <laughs> Spiritual yes. Weapon. Nice. A 15? 15 will hit, yeah. <laughs> and he gets womped with 10 points of force damage. Amazing. And he's on fire. I think I just put a big target on my head. Gideon Lightward. It is his turn. You will need to make a con save. All right. That is a 20. The flames extinguish on him. He is no longer on fire. Okay. He looks at you, actually, Renaissance, and he says, I'm not supposed to indulge in base gratifications, but watching your demise 
does bring me a small measure of joy. And he takes from his neck this holy symbol, which is a twisted letter in Infernal, which is the letter Z. Mm -hmm. And he presents it towards you. And as you watch these ghostly creatures, semi-translucent, come out of the ground all around you within about 15 feet of Gideon Lightwood. And these spectral figures spring forth out of the ground. They have sort of skeletal faces and they, they circle the two of you, brandishing ghostly weapons. And he has cast the spell Spirit Guardians. Oh God. It's okay, it's gonna be okay guys, don't worry. I, I, I thought this was coming. When you start your turn or when you move into this area, you will take damage. I think our movement's halved. Your movement is halved, that's correct. And having cast that spell, he'll just stand there. We're at the top of the order. Hyland, you're up. All right, I throw two more psychic blades at Gideon Lightward. This will be because these creatures are in the way, these giant skeletons. Um, he will have half cover, I would say, from them because they're just enormous. So that is a minus two to your attack. Mm. Okay, but I also am blessed, so I'm going to roll my bless yeah. here. So that'd be a 13 to hit. A 13 will hit. Awesome. So that is nine psychic, and this time I get 10 sneak attack for a total of 19 on the first hit. You will need to make a concentration check on those spirit guardians. That's my hope. That is a 23 on his constitution saving. Uh. Okay. And that is a crit on the second nice. hit. Woo-hoo. Very nice. Woo! But it doesn't get the sneak attack, sadly. So that is just a total of eight, but I'm still excited. <laughs> still pretty great. Eight psychic. Another another constitution saving throw for him. That's a 17. Shit. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm going to stay where I am, I guess. It is Lulu's turn. Lulu uses all of her strength to try to pull Alder Ravenguard away from the action. So she will make an athletics check and just try to pull the prone body of Alder Ravenguard. Oh, plate mail. Yeah. She just, she can't take it. She's, she's a very Lulu, strong yo. little Come elephant. On. Okay. Who are you to doubt Lulu? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, she rolled a three. <laughs> Doesn't matter. She tries, but she fails. Yeah, she rolled a three. That's okay. See? Told you. She tried. <laughs> Ophelia, you're up. Ophelia begins to play furiously on her violin, and as she plays, she says, The king of hearts called for the Tars and beat the name full sore. The name of hearts brought back the Tars, and now he steal no more. And she casts Tasha's mind whip on Gideon. Ooh. Awesome. Nice. I haven't done this one before. It's exciting. So that's going to be a DC 15 intelligence save. I love it. Oh, that's a natural one. Woo-hoo! Aw, too bad, so sad. He's going to take 11 psychic damage, and he cannot take a reaction until the end of his next turn. Additionally, Matt, on his next turn, he has to choose whether he gets to move, to act, or to take a bonus action. You only get one of the three. Awesome. Love it. Uh, Another constitution saving throw. One day he's gonna fail one. (laughs) That's a 23. One day, today is not that That day. That day is not today. We are at uh, Rhea's turn. Rhea will continue her assault on the skeletal minotaur in the corner. She hits both times. Oh, yay, she hits. Knocks a couple of, uh, of ribs out of this creature's rib cage. Renaissance, it is your turn. You've started your turn inside the spiritual guardians. God. So this I'm so no. tense. My special tiefling is getting his ass handed to it right now. <laughs> Wisdom saving throw. A 27. Woo! That is absolutely good. <laughs> you take half the damage on this. So you only take four necrotic damage. Oh, thank God. Your special tiefling is safe for now. Uh, for now. I grimace as I take the four necrotic. I close my left gauntlet over the head of Heaven's Fall again, and I say, Highland. And 
Heaven's Fall now looks like it's a mace made of pure light. Ooh. You folks haven't Ooh. seen this one before, but I have cast mm-hmm. Branding Smite as a bonus action on the mace. Love and a good smite. And then I swing it at Gideon Lightward's head with a 24. Woo! He's going to take six bludgeoning and one radiant off of, that's six magical bludgeoning and one radiant off of the mace. And then he's going to take some more radiant damage from the smite. Okay, seven radiant off the smite. 14 total. And I'm going to swing at him again. All right. Oh, uh, sorry. Constitution save for him. Sure. That's a 23. Damn it. Second hit is a 17. That'll hit. And he will take six magical bludgeoning and four radiant. So 10 more damage. Beautiful. And another constitution save. You guys are battering this this poor spell out of him. I these things them. down. My special bugbear. My special yeah. bugbear is going to get hurt. <laughs> My special bugbear. <laughs> 16. Ah, he made it again. Sorry, Matt, just a knock-on effect from the Radiant Smite that I just hit him with, which probably won't matter at all. He is shedding dim light in a five-foot radius. Uh, and he... I don't know if He's he has the now. ability to become invisible, but he can't for the next minute. Okay. Fair. I love it. The Minotaur Skeletons are... Three of them are turned and will run away from you, Corbin. For all intents and purposes, they use their action to dash as well as run. So there are 80 feet. <laughs> Does Highland get an op attack? But I wouldn't, and we right? Get don't. Do, I wouldn't, do not though. do that, though. I, I wouldn't. Oh, turn. you're right. You're right. You're right. I forgot. Never mind. Okay. So three out of the four around you, Corbin and Renaissance, have run as far as they can. They're almost out of sight, to be perfectly honest. Great. There are, however, two Minotaur skeletons still in engagement with you and or Rhea. And so they're going to go. Uh, this will be an attack on you, Corbin. All right. That's a 19 to hit. Hit. Uh, that is 16 slashing damage. God. Oh. Corbin. You up? Drops. No! Oh! Oh, oh no. Oh, that was exactly what I had left. 16. No. Oh, no. Don't worry, Corbin. We're coming for you. This is this is very upsetting. This is very upsetting. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, my God. All right. And then the Hot. other skeleton will attack Rhea. Do you still have that inspiration point, Corbin? Nope. That will Damn. actually crit Rhea. Oh, oh God. God. TP God. fucking K. Well, no. don't say no. it. Don't say that. We got, that. We got it. We got this. Why would you manifest that into the universe like that? <laughs> I turn to face Highland and say, am I a special tiefling or not? Trust me. <laughs> We're getting out of here. <laughs> I take it back. Good news, bad news situation. The good news is uh, that she did have temporary hit points from you, Corbin. Bad news is that this crit is 46 slashing damage. Oh my oh. god. Holy cow. She yeah. down? Get she's out, not. Andy. Just uh, leave. You said, holy cow. She's not down. <laughs> she's not. I didn't she say holy 67. cow on purpose. Kinda she had 67 hit points to start, and now okay. she's at 21. Oh, my God. Oh, God. <gasps> Big hit. You just watch as this axe whistles through the air, and I guess maybe it was that Rhea was distracted by, by Corbin's dropping on the ground, and she, like, slow-mo looks over at you, Corbin, just like, no! And as she does so, this axe just comes down on her like a ton of bricks, and just a gout of blood flies through the air. Has anyone killed a minotaur yet? No. Not yet. Oh, God. Oh, God. I've been trying to bring down the stupid spirit guard. Me too. I know. I know. Yep. Uh, we, we really have to, because that's going to kill I know. We him. have to. We have to. You got to focus. Yeah. I get it. So, it's now Corbin's turn. Corbin, because you start your turn, in the spirit guardians. Oh, for fuck's even, sake. Even though I'm on the ground, I'm like hiding under them. I'm trying to figure the fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> I made a Marge Simpson like. Mm. So again, good news, bad news situation is this is not a melee attack. This is just ongoing damage. So you will take a single death saving throw failure oh my from that. Please roll your death saving throw Shit. now, sir. Don't not want. 
Corbin, because you are next to me, you will still get a plus three on this saving throw. Awesome. All right, let's go see if I see Ready? Cassandra. Here we go. Eight. You, you're welcome. Plus three. You are welcome. Is it <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I, can't roll, I cannot roll a fucking death saving throw. Oh um, my so god. So I fail, but then I hear Renaissance's voice, and I'm like, I'm trying to hang on, and I'll take that success. One success, one failure for Corbin. Real bad news. It's Gideon Lightwart's turn. But don't forget, Matt, he can only do one thing. That's true. He can do an action, correct? He can do an action. Gideon's going to do one thing. Mm. And he's going to cast a spell on himself, which is a bonus action spell, actually. It's not even a regular spell. And that is a spell called Sanctuary, which basically wards him against any kind of attack. Any creature who attacks him must make a wisdom saving throw. And if that creature fails that wisdom saving throw, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack. It's a great cleric spell. It is with spirit guardians. It's a great combo. And it's not concentration. That's the best part. I was going to pull that trick on you, and now you used it on us. It is no longer Gideon Lightward's turn. Hylan. Oh, God. I can heal Corbin on my turn, so if you want to okay. just focus on, like, hitting some people as hard as possible, you do All right. that. It's dragging someone in action. Yes. Just hit, just hit, uh, what's his name? Fucking Gordon. <sighs> just get him. Gordon? Wow. Gordon. Gordon. Freudian slip <laughs> there, Rachel? Hit, hit Gordon Lightfoot. <laughs> Kill Gordon Lightfoot. Gordon. Yeah, hit Gordon. We hate Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I was so Bad sorry. I was so sorry. I don't know <laughs> I could, where that came from. I could pull him out of spirit guardians. I think you have to because if no, he starts I'm gonna his he, turn I'm going to heal him. No, but he's still going to. He's going to oh. go right back down. I'm going to drag him, him out. Hit him. Hit, Hit him. Uh, what if I'm... Uh, but also, don't the spirit guardians oh, go away saying. if we kill Gideon? Yeah, but he's not going to yes. die on our next round. Okay, I'm dragging Corbin out. I'm sorry, everyone. Okay. So you run into the spirit guardians, and when you do so, make a wisdom saving throw, please. Yes, and I'm next to have, him. Uh, you will have a plus three on that, because you're close enough to me. Yep. And you have bless, too. Yep, 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 yep. That is a natural 20 for a 21. Ooh. So you will only take half of this. Half of 17, which is eight. It is necrotic. But I think she is resistant to necrotic as well. Yeah. I am. So you only take four. Okay, okay, okay. I drag Corbin backwards as far as I can. Dragging someone takes half your movement. I would be able to move him 15 feet. So I do that so, so he's right in front of me now. Beautiful. I have dragged Corbin, and I say, you can do it. Don't leave us. Don't leave us again. And that's my turn. Lulu sees what has just occurred, and she's been struggling trying to get Alder Ravengard to move, but he's just too big, and he's just too heavy. Mm -hmm. And Lulu, being the calm, generous, and loving soul, always willing to be there for her friends, runs and sort of vaults over Alder Ravengard's body over to where you are, Hylan, and lands next to Corbin. Excellent. And you see this sort of golden light emanating out of Lulu in a, a small sphere that encompasses you and Corbin. And Lulu just sort of takes her trunk and gently passes it over Corbin's hair, almost in a motherly way. And she sort of begins to just hum, and her eyes focus to you, Hyland. And somehow you know that no matter what happens, everything's going to be all right. Aww. You're in this aura that she has now turned on, this aura of, well, sometimes it works to your advantage and sometimes it doesn't, but it's uh -huh. an aura where spells will not function within that right. aura. That any spell cast outside from outside the sphere to inside the sphere, things will not work. How bi how big is the sphere, Matt? It's got a 10-foot radius. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, I'm going to run up to Corbin, run into Lulu's sphere, and I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at level 2 on him. Thank you. Very nice. Oh, wait, level 3. I'm sorry. 
I'm do I'm I'm pulling out the big guns for you, my friend. There we go. That's oh. gonna heal you for 17 hit points. Oh. Corbin's eyes open and he's pissed. And then she'll <laughs> step back out of Lulu's circle. Okay, this is my very last bardic inspiration, and I'm giving it to you, Renaissance. Cheers, Ophelia. Use it well. Ray is struggling, I'm gonna be honest. She's not looking good. She's got 21 hit points, and she's got a minotaur in front of her. You got this, Raya. She, almost to herself, she's like, I will not fail. And she swings her sword twice at the skeleton. She hits it once, doing seven slashing. The other one, uh. her grip sort of falters a little bit, and the, the minotaur just grabs her arm and then pushes her away. And now it is Renaissance's turn. I guess I'm starting my turn in these things again, so I'm sorry about yes, what- Yes, wisdom what saving throw, please. 24. Oh. Excellent. You take half damage. You take half of 13, which is six necrotic damage. All right. I calmly step back away from Gideon. He can feel free to up attack me if he wants. He will. So if he attacks me, he loses his sanctuary. He does. He's lost his little mind and he will attack you. That's a 22 to hit. Yeah. That is 11 bludgeoning damage. It feels like a, a, just a granite block hits you in the back as you turn uh, from him. him. Okay, I stagger, but I'm still up. I'm sorry, he <laughs> dropped a sanctuary when he hit me. He did, yeah, he dropped uh, a sanctuary. Once he hits me, I stop. I turn around, I take a swing at him. You're gonna stay okay. in those things? No, I'm not, I'm not, he just okay. uses reaction. A 12. A 12 will hit. Five bludgeoning, two radiant. Uh, okay. I'm gonna dump a smite on him. Okay, smite away. This will be a level one smite. He's undead. Correct. 15 radiant. All right. Ooh, very nice. nice. Big smite. Yeah, big, big how hit. Do, how do you do in his concentration check? He got a 25. I hate him. <laughs> Fuck. So I guess he's he made looking it. super, super close to death, though. I mean, he's just literally like he's the flesh just is just so falling off focused, his bones. So, I'm a sword. I keep my blade sharp and my mind keen to survive what lies beyond. I am going to harness divine power to burn my channel divinity to give myself one more level one spell slot, and I will take okay. one more swing at him. Tal, don't forget that you have bardic inspiration. I will add. Thank you very much, Ophelia. I got a nine, which I'm assuming is going to miss, Matt. It will miss. But courtesy of Ophelia, I will add a Bardic Inspiration, which Ophelia is a 1d8. Yes. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. It is at this yes. level. Uh, an eight, that Ooh. will make that a 17. Nice. <gasps> and that will hit. Yes. Okay. Yes. He had one hit point. Oh. Okay. Please yes. do us the honors of how you level this foe with your attack. I cave in his skull <gasps> in the front with Heaven's Fall and all of his spirit guardians disintegrate as his corpse collapses at my feet. Yes. Okay. You could still move uh, away from this amazing. minotaur. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bravely run away from the minotaurs at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, smart. He's uh, good and he's smart. <laughs> yes, Solid I choice. spare one, exactly one second to gloat over that. And I look at the minotaur that's bearing down on me and I run for Lulu. <laughs> yep. Fair. <laughs> Completely fair. <laughs> and that is the end of my turn. Oh, uh, okay. awesome. Nice. Yep, yep. Good turn. Good turn. Okay. Gideon Light Ward, um, as he falls to the ground, you watch as his skin shrivels, his muscle turns to a sort of a black ash, and he just exhales and his entire form turns into a skeletal black ash smear on the ground. Good. But that doesn't stop the skeletal minotaurs mm. who are still there. There are still two of them left and it is now their turn. Okay, I, I feel encouraged. I mean, that was a big hit. Good. That was really huge. That, that was, smite was enormous. That was great. Awesome. Red is very fucked up, by the way. I know. <laughs> I know. Try not to die so I can do some sneak okay. attack damage. Do it, do it my best, yep. <laughs> One of the two minotaurs, the minotaur that you just ran past, Renaissance, will follow you. And it'll do something that you saw the live minotaurs do, yeah. which is to run. charge. Yeah. It basically just levels its horns and just charges directly into you, which if it hits, will do extra damage. 
That is an 18 to hit. 18 does not hit. Nice. That's right. Not hit. I dodge out of the way barely. Cool. Hell yes. For the Absolutely. red cape. Undead Toro. Okay, <laughs> the other one will slash at the badly wounded Rhea Mantelmorn mm. with its great axe. No crit, no crit, no crit. Oh my fucking god. No, it didn't. Is it really? Yes. Here. That's that's it right there, folks. Take a look. Oh dear. So it does, as you can see. Folks, 20, it looks legit. 22. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> Can confirm. Can confirm. <laughs> the listeners need Actual to know. Crit. Dory checks out. Yep. That is 22 slashing damage on Rhea. Oh, Rhea. And she only had 21 hit points. Oh, so close. <laughs> My special human. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're going to cheapen your special it. There have been instances where NPCs have dropped to zero and they've just expired because I, as the benevolent DM, have thought them unworthy of death saving throws. Mm. Rhea has been with you almost since the beginning, so mm -hmm. I think it's only fair that she gets yeah. death saving throws. Yeah. But these Miltor skeletons are relentless. Corbin, it is your turn. You are prone on the ground with 17 hit points. Oh. Corbin staggers to his feet. Ilmata, help us. And Corbin himself is going to cast the same spell his buddy there just cast. He's mm -hmm. going to cast Spirit Guardian. Nice. So he is now surrounded by his little flapping butterfly-like hands that mm -hmm. <laughs> fly all around him. And then can his pillow reach this minotaur? It can move 20 feet. So I can move it right up to that big old minotaur that's right in front of me, and I'm going to take a wall thing. This minotaur has not been hit. It hasn't been hit yet? Oh, nope. but he will be. A Ooh. 20? Oh. Yeah, 20 will hit. He takes eight points of force damage. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh. And then Corbin is going to, like, shift around this guy, kind of dance around him and go in behind him so he's flanking with Ren. Cool and that will be his turn. Hyland, your turn. I am going to throw two psychic blades at this minotaur between Corbin and Renison. Ugh, that's an 11 to hit. An 11 will not hit. Wait, I'm you're going still blessed, you're still blessed. You're oh, still blessed. that's true, that's true, that's true. Doesn't matter, with the blessed, that's a 12, which is its AC, so All right, you're good. great, 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 great. So that's six psychic and 11 sneak attack for a total of 17 on the first hit. Very nice. Nice, second hit is an 18. That will hit. And that will do six psychic damage. Very cool. A crit would have been nice, and I'll stay where I am. Oh, man. Lulu is right in front of this thing. I don't think she's ever been closer to an enemy than she is right now. Mm -mm. Crap. I mean, she's got tusks, and she ain't afraid to use them. So... Her tiny tusks? Her tiny tusks will do damage. Oh. So she's gonna... She's just gonna ram herself as as hard as she can. She's she Get can him, she can do it. Ah! Heck yeah! Okay, Heck Lulu yeah. will make a, a tusk attack. She just don't you touch them? Don't you ever dare! And bam, right into awesome. this creature with her tusks. Lulu, my and she hits with a sixteen, doing nice. one piercing damage. Yeah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Our special little celestial elephant. <laughs> That is Lulu's turn. Ophelia, you're up. I say, Ophelia, can you help Rhea? Because I can fuck up these minotaurs. But if I have oh. to, I'll help her instead. Well, I was going to help, uh, fuck up the, the minotaurs. I, I don't know why you'd pronounce it like that. But uh, <laughs> I, I can... <laughs> um, I, I could help Rhea instead if you want. Um, you got yeah, I'll heal Rhea. We don't want her to die. Um, oh, wow. Thanks. Like, <laughs> she's like, she's gasping on the ground. She's like... Thank you for your I consideration. Guess. I, I, I would have no, asked it's the cleric fine. to heal her, but I know he has a no it's, healing anyone it's policy. Okay. It's okay. It's <laughs> okay. Shit. <laughs> heal, healing for can poor, save like it. paladins and whatnot. <laughs> I will cast Cure Wounds at a second level for Rhea. Nice. She is my friend. It's going to be 14 healing. Mm. All right. 
Very nice. Yeah, she gasps. Now fuck him up, Rhea. <laughs> That's the first thing she see, she hears yep. as she comes out. <laughs> She's like, she feels like the warmth of your loving, tender body embrace on her hand, and then like her eyes snap, and the first thing she sees is your face, <laughs> just like a fucking football coach in hers, and just yep. like, now fuck him up, Rhea. Rub some dirt in it. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> <laughs> this is a side of Ophelia we have not yet seen. I like Sometimes, it. Sometimes, desperate times, you know. It is now Rhea's turn. And she stands up and she'll drop her shield because she's pissed. She's never been this close to death and she's not gonna die in hell. No way. So she takes two two-handed longsword attacks. The first will hit with 23 nice. and the second will hit with a 24. That's All total right. 14 slashing damage. This creature is not looking good. Its arm is half smashed to bits. One of its horns has been broken off. Its maw is, is caved in slightly, but it's still up. And now it is Renaissance's turn. I'm gonna lift Heaven's Fall one more time and take a swing at it. Nice. That is a 26 to hit. Yeah. Absolutely will hit. Things that are enormous, big targets. Six bludgeoning, which will double to 12. That's correct. And then three radiant. So 12 magical bludgeoning and three radiant is 15 damage. Big hit. Big, big hit. All right. And staggers it a bit. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and dump that last smite that I didn't end up using on Gideon. Cool. So it's going to take an additional 3d8 radiant. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, not that great. Seven more radiant. Okay. And I will swing Heaven's Fall again. This will be a 23. Yay! Hell yeah. yeah. Seven bludgeoning de- uh, double to 14. <laughs> that is uh, enough plus... to destroy it. Oh. Okay. And I'm going to just get in position to back up Rhea if it takes her down again. It is now the final Minotaur skeleton that you can seize turn. Did that make sense grammatically? Yep. Sorry. Yep, it did. That yes. you can seize, C apostrophe S. There was a lot of hyphens in it. His name what? was Final Minotaur that you can see, all hyphenated, apostrophe S. <laughs> yes, okay. Minotaur Skeleton will attack. Rhea, whose AC has dropped by two, is no longer 17, is now 15 because she's dropped mm. her shield. This time I mean it, like no crits. That's a 21 to hit. Which will hit. That's well, a it's myth. not a crit. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, thank God. It hit her and not crit her. <laughs> <laughs> that is 17 slashing damage. Whoa. And that, that, is, that is enough to knock her out yet again. Shit. Corbin, would you condescend to help Rhea? Oh, I, 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 can't, I can't do it. I won't do it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it is the end of the skeleton's turn after he has knocked out Rhea Mantlemorn yet again. It is now Corbin's turn. Those other guys are still running away as far as They're possible. They're still running. Uh, that lasts, that, that turn undead lasts for a minute, am I correct? Correct. But they can run back too. Corbin will say, Rhea, get up, and he'll cast Healing Word on her. Nice. So five points, that's his bonus action. And then he's going to move over close to this Minotaur buddy of his. Okay, and he's going to say, you want to burn him. And he will uh, cast Sacred Flame on him. DC 15, Dexterity saving throw. They got a 17. Ah. Uh. So I miss him, but I'm standing right next to him. Over here, you piece of shit. <laughs> and uh, he's in my spirit wow. guardian, so. <laughs> all right. That's, that's, that's all I got. It is the end of the round, and I would like those of you in the vicinity, please, all of you, to make a perception check. I only got a 24. Ophelia got a 21. Renaissance got a 10. Corbin got a 17. Hyland, Ophelia, and Corbin, you hear the sounds which alerted you to the enormous number of undead creatures created by our friend Gideon Lightward. These are the sounds of moaning undead zombies and skeletons, which are slowly moving and getting louder from the north. Don't worry, I've got dust of dryness. <laughs> oh God, that made me snort. Since it was just Corbin's turn, and he yes. heard that, he would like yes. to say, if, if those things get on us, get in close to me. All right, get in close. Okay. And that's all he said. Highland, it is now your turn. Okay. 
Okay, we got company coming from the north. And I'm gonna fillet this mignon. And I'm gonna throw two, no, God. No. two oh daggers God. at it. And I, I'm gonna roll my bless here. An 11. An 11 will miss. So just I'm gonna barely. use my inspiration point to re roll it. Don't make this be a waste of my time. That's a 12. Nice. Yes, that will hit. Okay. That's four psychic and seven sneak attack for a total of 11 first hit. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, this thing is not looking good. Second hit is a 17 to hit. Yes, indeed. Ugh, four psychic. And I'm going to move five feet north so I can be next to Elder Ravenguard and pick him up and run if I have to. He's enormous. I just want to let you know. Like, yeah, I mean, the but no one else is around. Foot three. That hit took a lot out of that skeletal minotaur. It, it is not looking good. It's barely standing. Great. All right. That That is the end of your turn, Highland. As you turn towards Alder Ravenguard, you see just coming out of the far reaches of your vision around the corner of this particular building, five skeletons and three zombies. I'm going to put them in initiative now, actually, because it's a new round. So. Okay, then I'm going to yell to everybody, kill it, we have to move! They're coming! Game over, man, game over! That's I a lot say, of zombies. Someone help me drag this guy, and that's it. There is uh, still one uh, minotaur left on the field. Lulu Lulu uh, felt emboldened by her last attack. Oh my god. Um, and she flies into battle, uh, possessed perhaps by some internal uh, feeling of, of glory uh, or of, of championing the, the, the righteous and just speeds like a bullet straight at this final minotaur. And please don't let me just fucking fall over on my you face built when I that up matt thing. i did i did you're I really gonna break did. everyone's heart oh she rolled a 10 Aww. god damn it Ugh. come on lulu the skeletal minotaur sees her coming a mile away and just puts out its blade and lulu stops short and she's like oh that those, those are real sharp no 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 nah, mm -mm. i'm not ready for that and uh that is the end of lulu's turn ophelia it's now yours she is going to run up to the minotaur with her rapier She's going to charge at the Minotaur as fast and as furiously as she can, hoping to deliver the killing blow with this rapier. Here goes nothing. Literally nothing. It's an eight. Um, I'm blessed, so it's a D an extra D4 I get to add. Yep. Uh, that's, yeah, nine is not enough. I will use my inspiration to reroll this attack. Now, here's the thing. This is the last inspiration for all four of you, because you've used all of them. Yep. So you can't give them out to anybody else. Well, I have rolled with the blessing exactly yes. enough. All right. That is, a, that is a 12. You are right. It's going to take seven piercing damage. You have pierced it through its bony brain, and it falls to the ground, and all the bones scatter in a heap. Yes. Let's run. Amazing. Ophelia for the win, and now we run. <laughs> I've only used five feet of my movement, so I'll use the rest of my movement to start running southward. Rhea picks herself up and sees that you guys are in a tactical retreat. She runs over to you, Highland, picks mm -hmm. up the other half of Alder Ravenguard, and I think that will improve your speed overall. Running sideways with mm -hmm. one of Great. you, you know. Grabbing look, the front, the, the top, and one grabbing the bottom. We look amazing. At least we have our dignity. Yeah. Thanks very much for listening. This episode featured the Dungeon Master stylings of Matt Gordon, with Tali Viezer as Renaissance, Carolyn Fox as Highland, Rachel Tamron as Ophelia, and me, Andy Canistra, as Painbearer Corbin Shiv. This episode was edited by Carolyn Fox and Tal Aviazer. Our original theme music is by Lauren Anker and Anthony Damaso. Remember, if you enjoy Podcast Party, please follow the show, rate us, and leave us a review. Thanks very much for listening. We'll be back in two weeks with the next episode. And uh, that is the end of Lulu's turn. Rafelia is now yours. Did you just call me Rafelia? He did. Uh... I can neither confirm nor deny the use of Rafelia. <laughs>
It was the coach talk. So uh, now you're rough. You're like really rough. Rough-philia. Yeah. Uh, rough-philia. 